the January 8th, 2020 meeting of the Carlington School District Board of Directors is called to order. Uh, if we can rise and to the pledge and the leaders of the I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, for the liberty and justice for all. Will the secretary please call the roll? There's a portion of our meeting at the very beginning where we invite the public to comment on anything that's on our agenda for tonight. I do see that there's somebody that signed up for a non-agenda item. Um, is uh, Rebecca here? Normally we would have you wait to the very end of the meeting to comment. If you think it's a brief comment, we can entertain it now, or if you think it's a longer conversation, we can hold it at the end for the... It doesn't matter, we'll wait till the end. Is that okay? Yeah. Great. Mm -hmm. Any other uh, questions on agenda items for tonight? If not, we will jump in. So we any other direction before we start? Okay. So we have three items for tonight. Uh, budget conversation, uh, discussion of the goals for 2021, and then debt financing conversation. Uh, Dr. Imperio, do you want to set yes. the stage for the budget conversation? Yes. Um, first of all, uh, let me explain that uh, Mr. Jesuit uh, is not able to be here with us this evening due to uh, a family uh, a family issue and um, so uh, we'll be filling in for him. Uh, we've been meeting with uh, three members of the board who have been actively involved in helping the board uh, choose a focus on the budgetary issues as Dr. Mendoza, uh, David Russo's and Jude Frank. In fact, we, we actually met over the holidays, and uh, David had talked about preparing some focus items for the board to share with them this, this evening, and that is, and, and, and I think it's fair to say, David, that the thing that you believe uh, needs to be a central focus uh, for the board and the district is uh, the, uh, the fund balance. So, uh, and, and of course, it does need uh, to be. So, with that in mind, um, I'll turn it over to you and to Mr. Frank, and you can uh, pick that from there. All right, Frank. 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 <laughs> so, um, this stems from uh, thoughts regarding the preliminary budget. The question as to what can we responsibly spend of our finite fund balance? And how do we figure that out? How do we use that uh, in the best way for the district? So, um, Jude and I have uh, talked about this. Uh, the board members have a, a handout that Jude had gotten together that uh, gets into some greater detail with all this. Uh, this brief slide presentation is intended to kind of provide a framework and then we can build on that with, uh, with the handout. So, um, first of all, the fund balance. What's the fund balance? And it's basically um, what we have, it's the difference between our assets and our liabilities. Uh, it's additional money so we can use it for you know, whatever is appropriate within that fund balance. Positive fund balance is a good thing because it means our assets exceed our liabilities. And a negative fund balance, inversely, is, is not a good thing because we have more, more liabilities than we have assets to govern. As we move forward, uh, and, well, as, we, as we have our budgets and our years end, uh, the surpluses are assets, so it helps. It's a good thing. It helps to build up that fund balance. And operating deficits, which we've been experiencing for a number of years, um, as a liability, Brings down that, uh, brings down the fund balance. <coughs> so, how can we use the fund balance? Well, uh, historically, I think most and, and most commonly, um, 
the fund balance is used as being a, a savings account, a reserve of funds. You, know, you put your budget together, and a budget is a best guess, a best estimate. And if you're off, you need to have some money put aside to cover just in case you had some kind of extraordinary <coughs> catastrophic event, um, or just calculations are such that uh, you needed some additional funds. Maybe you needed to hire an extra teacher or two. Um, so it provides for coverage for that uncertainty, but also it holds funds for future use, for future things you know you're going to do. In this district, we had a fund balance of the $14, 15000000 million, and we knew we were going to be doing some capital projects. So the money was held there, and we got to the point where we spent Ten million or so in capital projects, and didn't have to borrow anything because we had built up our our uh, fund balance sufficiently to cover all that. In the district now, the condition of the district, I mentioned before, uh, historically we've been running a deficit, uh, which means that our current revenues, revenues for that year, have been exceeding the expenditures. And that shortfall, we've had to rely on the fund balance each year to cover that up, which just continues to deplete. If that continues, we'll have a zero fund balance. So the hurdles that we're facing with the increasing liability, this deficit being an increasing liability, uh, well, is the deficit itself. But then with this year, the years that we're facing, and most immediately, we've got a significant number of our teachers hitting the jump step, and that's a $40,000 per year increase. And we've got about, I think, 25 to 30 teachers hitting that in the next three or four years. So that's a huge amount of money we've got to provide for. Them. And then also our uh, facilities. We need to make an investment in our facilities. Um, Dennis uh, met with us uh, over the holidays and provided a list. And the directors that have been given that list is one of the attachments of various projects that are, we're looking at doing. Um, we have been in a situation where we've had to put off doing a lot of these because of our financial situation. But we're at the point now where <coughs> it's going to be difficult to continue to do that. And what uh, Dennis had done with us in going over his list was try to identify those items which, which we need to do within the next five years. We're looking at a five-year period. And uh, that's part of the ongoing analysis uh, that we're continuing to do. But being able to provide for those five years of, of uh, facility investment is something we're going to need this, this fund balance to do as well. So, <clears throat> our goals. Our goals need to be in line with the fact that we're trying to provide the best educational experience for our students. We have limited resources, and we have necessary expenditures. Uh, we need to transition away from relying on the fund balance every year, because that's just not sustainable. We needed to maintain an appropriate amount to cover those unforeseen items, to cover the risk that we're going to have in any, um, in any given year. Uh, and we're also going to need, as we talked about, to cover those known expenditures in the short term. Excuse me, namely the facilities. Uh, Long-term financial stability is something we've got to pull out of this as well after you know, for, uh, the course of the next five years. And then to get there, we're looking at planning foreseeable, uh, foreseeable spending, and then also have a reserve for unforeseen expenditures. And this is a risk analysis that um, Jude is taking the lead on. Substantial effort, and he's able to bring a lot of resources toward doing that, which we appreciate. Um, that will give us a very, very good sense as to really what we're going to need for the size. So districts. Often we'll just take a per percentage of expenditures, four percent, eight percent, and say that's what we need to have in our fund balance. And as a back of the envelope, kind of rough way, just to make sure you have some money aside, that's, that works to some degree. But given the situation that we're in, we're really trying to identify the absolute, the absolute amount. So it's not going to be too much, but not be too little as well. And finally, we have to consider additional sources of funding. And that's certainly for some of these capital projects, it may be dead. Uh, we may need to look at other options, such as a referendum, uh, such as a, to adjust property taxes. So, managing the fund balance to get to these goals 
first we consider the current reserve that we need. And this is how to cover those unbudgeted expenditures of we we don't know of, but we know will arise. That's the risk analysis that Judith is, is working on. Uh, it's also identifying the and scheduling the various capital projects. Uh, those that we can put off for some time will do that, responsibly put off, but there's it's over $600,000 worth of uh, capital projects that we've uh, identified, Dennis has identified for us. And even there, there's certain costs that need to be invested to help us get through these next five years. And then there are cash flow considerations. What do I mean by that? Well, <clears throat> at the very beginning of any school year, in September, right, our monies haven't really started coming in yet. Revenue, and we still got expenses. So, I don't think that'll be a, a, a major issue for us, but whatever we decide on what our fund balance is gonna be, at a minimum, we need to be able to look at, at uh, what our spending is in the early part of the year and make sure that we have enough cash there to cover that. Come October, we've got 80% uh, of our revenue in just because that's what everybody's paying the property taxes and we're getting some basic education funding money as well. Uh, so with all this, it, it's just gonna come down to Current reserve, and we take the remaining amount of the fund balance, and that's used to help us get through these next five years to, to try and soften the transition into balanced, balanced meaning current revenues covering current expenditures. Uh, as an example, a uh, very simple example, the fund balance is the end of uh, the, the last school year. June 2019 was just over $3 million. The budgeted deficit, 561 represents a 7-Eleven uh, budgeted amount, but then with some changes that uh, Chris and Joe Ray were working on the bus contract, <coughs> realizing conservatively some savings in the year of $150,000. So that 561 represents a 7-Eleven less than 150000 So that means what we're projecting right now, projecting, it's a fund balance at the end of this year, June of 2020, of $2,533,200. We look now at 2021, and if our analysis says what we need as a reserve is a million dollars, that's what that would represent. That's just, a, for example, that's just hypothetical, so let's not latch too much onto that. But that's just over 3% of our expenditures, which is not a particularly high number. It's likely to be something I would think in that range. Facility investment over the next five years, $650,000. So take those amounts off the two and a half million, which means we have just under $900,000 to use as a funding source over the next few years to help cover our shortfall. Clearly, we need to get to a point where it's balanced because this money's not gonna last forever. So the next steps. We're continuing to uh, work on the numbers. <coughs> we need to va uh, validate, finalize these numbers, in particular with regard to the jump step, the facilities uh, investment that we need to make. Um, also, uh, looking at uh, the risk, doing the risk analysis again that Jude's leading the, the way on to come up with uh, a sufficient amount of funding <coughs> to provide as a current reserve for uh, the current year expenditures. And then revenue sources, consider all revenue sources. Uh, currently what we have, do we need to, 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 to address some other opportunities for a referendum, for example? We should look at debt, arguably, possibly. There's two sides to debt. Granted, it brings some money in, in the short term to help cover some things, but then, of course, we have an additional expense in terms of interest and principal payments. And debt would be for capital. It wouldn't be for operating. We're statutorily prohibited from borrowing money to cover our regular operating expenses. So this would only be for stuff like <clears throat> We're going to need a new roof on this building. Um, Dennis, we, we can probably get through five years with some work, but <coughs> soon after that, we'll probably have to get a new roof. Yep. So that's what we have to that's what we have to look at there. Um, and fund balance, we've been using that as a resource. We're not going to be able to do that forever. Are there any other revenue resources we need to we need to contemplate that? So there's some decisions we need to make here, um, and once those decisions are made. Just begin to implement. Again, for me, this is all about when the vote takes place on that preliminary budget at the end of this month, the amount of fund balance that we use, is that something 
personally, I'm going to be comfortable with. And that's this analysis, the purpose of it is for me and Jude and providing it to the rest of you guys to be able to say, yes, we can use this amount. And it's not, we're not blowing everything this year and leaving insufficient amount, insufficient amounts to get us to transition through the next five years. Jude, what else would you like to add? I mean, I just think of providing, giving, you know, setting that that fund balance amount that we're gonna we're gonna hold is kind of a constraint. So we're providing we're providing the administration a constraint with with like boundaries within which they can operate and figure out how to balance the budget there. Yeah, this in no way is about telling you whether or not we should how many crayons we should be buying in the second grade or whether we should be doing this or that or whatever. The budget's developed by the competent uh, professionals that we have in this district, the superintendent, our business manager. Uh, this is just for us as, as those responsible for the assets of the district as board to say this is how we are comfortable with those limited assets being used. Any questions at this point? So the thinking is, um, dude, I think what we're looking at doing is coming back, if not at the next meeting, sometime ideally prior to the voting meeting at the end of the month, with the analysis, we're, we're making a recommendation that this is what the fund balance should be. Uh, this is a preliminary budget we're going to be voting on, so it's not final changes can be made, but I think it's something we've got to talk about the sooner the better, just because I suspect what is now, last Chris mentioned, I think it was $858,000 deficit. So um, that, that we can, since that's <coughs> the entire amount we may have available to help transition us, clearly we're going to have to get that down. And uh, we'll do, we look to the leaders of the district to, to find out ways to do that. <coughs> Good. All right. <coughs> Thank you. Any board members have comments or questions or, or follow up thoughts? Well, I'm, I'm, sure. I'm wondering um, if you could explain a little bit more about the zero based budget targeting of P50. Yeah, so that's what yeah, that's so that's what we're talking about when Joe, Joe, this is number five on the handout. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that really plays into where we're determining that. On here it says the reserve for operations, the, the million dollars. That's that's kind of made it's a rough guess. But what we'll do is you can come up with we can look at, you know, um, you can look at all your different liabilities and say you're going to plan to reserve enough money to cover all of them 100%. Um, but then, what's the probability of each one of those liabilities actually occurring? Well, one of them may be 10%. Are you really going to save $10 million or $1 million for something that has a 1% or 10% probability of actually occurring? That's probably not reasonable, especially when you're in a situation like ours where you're making difficult decisions on how you're going to budget and what you're not going to provide or what you're gonna do about balancing, <coughs> basically reducing your expenditures in order to have a balanced budget. Um, so the P50, another way you could do it is also just to say, well, just do a weighted average and say, well, I think the probability of each of these is this. Um, another way, which is kind of what we're looking at for the risk analysis, is to take kind of all the components of the budget, break them out by kind of historically how they vary over time, and um, run a Monte Carlo analysis basically generate a probability distribution and a P50 would be the median number. Um, and so you're not, you're, it's a way of ensuring it's, P50 would be 50% <coughs> probability that you'll come in over and 50% probability that you'll come in under that number. And so it's a way of, it's a pretty good kind of middle number where you're confident that you're not over, over budgeting or under budgeting. Okay, so these, Three different columns or three different ways. Of different ways of doing it, kind of simplified, yes. Okay. So, so to generate that probability, the P50, that's a, a bit of work, kind of working with the administration, with Dennis or with Chris, and looking and getting kind of some subjective um, judgments on their part on what they think the probability is on some of those and how necessary it is. Toward that effort as well, what we've done is we've got some information from Chris. Um, five years, last five years, data on actual expenditures. Been looking to group those expenditures 
in such a way to <coughs> have like a dozen or 15 subgroups and within those subgroups performing the pre-50 analysis that, uh, that Chris is talking about, that she, she was talking about. So you're not just looking at, we're not just looking at the risk or you know the change in probability on expenses, we're also doing the same thing with, with revenue. So key revenue components, there's a possibility could come in under or look under or over, and so that's another factor that goes into that. So we're not we're trying to make sure that we're not, you know, airing on the high side on one end and airing on the low side on the other end. So this this, this document is is um, nine items plus the um, the appendix is that this is something you guys want uh, proposing that we use to further the discussion. This isn't something correct. Yes. Yeah. So I'm guessing that, that when we have our finance committee next week. We have some more discussion. <coughs> sort of thing, absolutely. absolutely. And the goal would be that to, some of these numbers are very rough, mm -hmm. and so between now and then, <coughs> we'll get to the point where we'll get a little bit more detail on, more get closer to what's right. But by, by doing what we're doing, now, <coughs> uh, I think we have to, we're going to have sufficient time to be able to sort of establish what we're looking for in terms of fund balance research. Mm -hmm. uh, we may not be quite there by next week, Joe. No, I'm not saying it. But yeah, I, I would it's hope by the end of the month, by the preliminary vote, the preliminary budget, and even that, we may not be actually. You know, we may be able to control and say this is what we're looking at. Five thousand a year. But I doubt that there will have been time to make the necessary expenditure reductions to get the budget done by that point in time. But at least the information is out. Mm -hmm. And this is all subject, I mean, this is subject to discussion for the board. The board may say, well, we know what you're saying it should be 450, but we're not comfortable. We want to go with 550, and we'll just have to deal with having 100 less later on. And we have that discussion to see if it makes sense to do that. Nothing else? <coughs> Thank you. Thank you for taking the time to the time in it is really appreciated. Yeah, thanks. It's very helpful. And certainly, you know, after reviewing this yeah. for June, if you have any questions, I mean, just reach out and have discussion. I think one thing we can talk about next week is how we overlay the uncertainty that we've seen the last couple of years in budget versus actuals. Um, we've come in better than expected each of the last couple of years, and a couple of more members lamented, not lamented, noted. Um, had we made more severe, um, more aggressive moves because of budgetary concerns, we would have been doing things that we maybe didn't have to do. Big picture, we still have uh, monetary issues we need to, to solve, so that, that's not changing. But short term, I think we've been trying to be very careful balancing our acknowledgement of our long-term financial condition and then short-term moves that we want to not be too aggressive if, if, uh, if we can help it. So, I, I, maybe by next week you can kind of think about how we overlay that realization with some excellent oh, you know, financial analysis. And I think that's analysis. the long yeah, that's, analysis. Yeah, that's, I think that's what that's we're trying to achieve right. with this by making sure that the analysis that we go into is a little bit, it's pretty rigorous the, and mm -hmm. have control over it. I think that'll probably solve part of it. The other part of it, at least for me, I don't understand, I'm not sure even we understand it, is because we just dramatically changed our budgeting process internally, I think we're still, um, we're still coming to grips with how that process works and the output that it gives us, how it how it tracks to actual expenditures. So uh, maybe that's a component of it, and maybe now that Chris has had a year under his belt, maybe it's going to be rock solid moving forward. I don't know. Um, the good news is that the the variance, the delta, has been a positive one, so it's not bad news. But again, we don't want to make drastic financial moves if we don't need to. Well, I. Those statements with caution because one, those revenue that we got unexpected, a lot of those were one time incoming that were found and they're they're not every year we're gonna have this continued revenue. Something Just like the correct. jump step is gonna be a continued cost every year accumulating. 
Um, and the other thing is, I think Chris has gotten pretty close to like live budgeting, so he is, I think he's pretty solid, so it's, it's a lot more easier to predict. Awesome. But just like some of these changes with that incoming revenue, like those were just things like with the interim business manager before and with him, like covering stuff and those changes, but like, I don't, I can't, I, I don't feel comfortable depending on that we're gonna have this consistent doing better than previous year. So like, I feel more confident looking at the historical pattern of, yeah, we are running an operation deficit and we have to change our permanent spending habits. Because like, just this, like with the oncoming jump step, I don't think we're gonna be able to afford it. And I'll echo their comments. The work to put this together was great. And thank you, everybody. And it's, it's a good job that we have to have. So thank you. Thank you for the opportunity. Mm -hmm. I, I want to echo the same thing, uh, David. Uh, Chris and I have had several meetings following our discussion, particularly on approaching the budget. Um, uh, we've always done some probability analysis, and we've always uh, uh, factored that in, but I think uh, both of you have helped us put that in a new light in terms of when we need to do more of it and how we need to do it. So that that's been extremely. But I think that's largely we've got largely Judith to thank for that. Yes, He's bringing that was very capability and expertise. Uh, that's such a skull for example, that's the Juan Carlos. That's I mean I've seen a lot of research and stuff, so that's pretty good that you're implementing. I think I would sit here, but that's awesome. Any other questions on that topic? If not, we can move on to the next one. Uh, subject 2.2, goals for the 2021 school year. Um, you know, do you want to I can make general comments to start off that discussion? Yes. Um, uh, we are in the midst of our new five-year strategic planning process. Ed in uh, Mantic is heading up that uh, project in many, many ways. Of course, our first thoughts uh, go to student achievement, meeting and serving student needs, and um, it's all about curriculum, instruction, and assessment. And of course, I think the piece that we layer on here is to do it in a physically sound way and uh, it's been a challenge but we've been doing a lot of uh, uh, good things. I think our staff and our principals have been working hard to bring in uh, new monies that help that process but since Dr. Crowder will be coming on uh, soon the state has asked us to delay that process until he's on board full time and then we'll be earnest uh, very earnestly getting into and setting uh, the goals that uh, we have. And I, I think our test scores, by and large, have been steady or improving. Uh, when the state, statewide, had what I'd call a decline in middle school math, we did experience that as well. And it's still not a good thing, but we were not standing alone and having uh, to deal with that issue, and we are dealing with it. So other than that, I think we're doing well, and uh, our uh, academic standing in the region, academic standing as a school district, has been steadily growing. So with that, I think that's kind of uh, uh, where, where we are. And I, they asked that we meet over the holiday, and we did. Chris came in and was uh, working on that. And one of the things that they had asked to do and um, was to supply a, a, a list in priority order of what the capital projects are and when they are likely to need addressed. Dennis, I hate to do this, but Dennis did a pretty magnificent job. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Come around. No, a pretty comprehensive job of explaining what the <coughs> issues are uh, in terms of um, uh, going with uh, financing to do various uh, projects, what he's done to try to limit 
or hold off those projects, and his estimations of when um, those projects will need to be seriously addressing. You know, and in, in, in the other area, uh, as we speak right now, we are working on uh, two funding sources for uh, doing some capital projects <coughs> where we think we may have a line on getting some or all of the help that we may need uh, in, in two, uh, not, not gigantic, but uh, to uh, do additional uh, things with score, scoreboard down at the field, scoreboard as uh, in the uh, gymnasium where we play our games that are, <coughs> have reached their end cycle. So we've been looking at possible uh, uh, vendors who may be interested in uh, supplying us with the grant to do that. So we're addressing a variety of issues in a variety of ways, but I do have to give Dennis credit for um, uh, I, It was one of the best, uh, uh, and I think he had a copy, sent you a copy of it, lists of <laughs> what things need to be addressed and when they are likely to, uh, where we're going to need to address them. So uh, with that, and of course the biggest issue, Edison, I'm sure you want to 